Welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. Today we're introducing sand pine, Pinus clausa. Sand pine is a small to medium sized pine tree reaching about 60 feet tall and it naturally occurs across the state of Florida, although as its common name suggests, it only occurs in areas with sandy soils. So it's much more common along the coast in scrub along the coast and in coastal dune systems, although it does also occur inland on upland high ridges that have scrub and even in some sand hills. Although it has naturalized well outside of its native range across Florida in different areas and further north where it didn't naturally occur because it's been so heavily planted for pulp wood and it has naturalized and reseeded in these areas. The bark is reddish brown with a little bit of gray and it has flat, narrow, kind of flaky, irregular plates. The needles are very short, only about two to four inches long. They're fairly straight, but slightly wavy, slightly twisted, and they occur in bundles of two. The branches are also very slender and very um, numerously branched, so they have this kind of dense look to them because they're so heavily branched and the branches are very slender. So almost kind of a fluffy appearance. These are the male cones that are just producing pollen now that it's spring is coming. The cones are small, two to four inches long and have an ovoid shape and noticeably ha come to a kind of pointed tip at the top. A lot of the characteristics of sand pine are almost identical to Pinus glabra, spruce pine, but that's one of the differences. The um, cones of spruce pine don't have that sharp pointed tip on the cones. And sand pine occurs in areas with sandy soil, whereas spruce pine occurs in areas with more moist, rich soils. So habitat is really the biggest difference. The cones stay on the tree for a very long time, so they typically fade to a gray color and get dulled down with very few spines eventually. They also, because they stay on so long, the branch tends to grow up around them so it appears as if they have almost no stalk and sometimes they look like they're even embedded in the branch because they've occurred on the branch for so long that the branch has grown up around them. Last week we learned about pond pine and how they have serotonous cones, cones that only release their seed when exposed to the heat of fire that naturally moves through the landscape. Sand pines, interestingly, mostly have serotonous cones, although some populations do not. The majority of them do, and so all of the female cones will stay on the tree closed, tightly closed, waiting for fire to come through the landscape. Sand pines also have what's called complete stand replacement. So when fire does move through the landscape, which is not frequent in sand pine scrubs, the entire uh, population of mature sand pines die in the fire and then all of those seeds are released and the entire stand is replaced. And again, many of the characteristics of sand pine are very similar or almost identical to spruce pine, Pinus glabra, but the main difference between the two is their habitat. Sand pine occur in upland dry sandy soils and spruce pine occurs in lower, wetter, moist and more rich soils. Thanks for joining us today and I'll see you guys again next week.